Hey, welcome to another episode of Mojave River Valley News. This is, I'm Eric Swanson, your host. This is our campaign season. So what we do is we do a lot of campaign videos. Tonight we have someone that's running from the Victorville City Council, the California State Senate, the Spray Recreation Park District, and the Adelanto School Board. We want to make sure that this information gets out to you because sometimes it's very, very difficult to figure out who these folks are. So, you know, stay with us and we'll be right back with you in just a moment. Hey, welcome back. I got a great interview for you. Suzette Valadares, she's running for the California State Senate. It'll be a great interview. Hey, stay with us. We'll be right back with you. Hey, welcome back. I'm here with Suzette Valadares. Now, Suzette's running for the state. Senate, District 23. Thank you very much. I knew the number. I really, really, really did. Hey, Suzette, tell the folks a little bit about you over there real quick. Yeah. So my name is Suzette martinez Valderis. I am running for State Senate District 23. It is a new district. So this is the first time that this, um, uh, this district is on the ballot. It includes Santa Clarita, the high desert areas of Victorville, Adelanto, Palmdale, Lancaster. It is a million people. Um, a little bit about me. I am a former assemblywoman. Have, I represented the 38th Assembly District, which is, which is Acton, Agua Dulce, uh, and Santa Clarita. I am a SoCal native. My first job was at Six Flags Magic Mountain, and I went to um, a local community college, a local Cal State. So I am homegrown SoCal girl and asking to be the voice for our community in the state Senate. I remember the first time we met, I asked you about because you're, you're serving in an area that's Lancaster, Palmdale. Remember that? You're serving over here. How much are we going to see you? And I have to come back and say, I think we're seeing you more than they are seeing you. So I'm very <laughs> impressed with that. So, hey, I want to touch on a few things here. That, that um, I think that one of the things in our state, and correct me if I'm wrong here on this, is is obviously, you know, the safety. You know, of course, you don't have very, you have the jurisdiction over the border, but we're affected by it. And, of course, crime in the state. Could you touch on a little bit where you think we need to go? Or what do you think, what do we need to do? Yeah, you know, when I talk to people, Eric, whether it's at doors in the grocery store, I went to actually Michoacana, which is the Mexican like ice cream, my mm -hmm. favorite Mexican yeah. ice, ice cream store. And I was helping my friend out there and um, I introduced myself as running for state Senate. And one of the gentlemen that came in was so he's like, well, what are you guys going to do about the border crisis? What are you going to do as a state about crime? He's mm -hmm. like, this is worse than Mexico. We are seeing crime rise in our state True. that and it's 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 property crimes it's violent crime and the sad reality is that it's a direct result of failed policies coming out of sacramento and you know i when i served in the state assembly i served in the state assembly for two years um some of the saddest bills that i saw pass i was i was a big fat no on um were bills on public safety and what's happening in sacramento is a public safety committee is not actually uh, serving the interest of public safety. They're serving the interest of criminals. One of the bills that was so heartbreaking to me and why I'm particularly passionate, uh, passionate about public safety is there was a bill, um, SB 357, that was passed and essentially says that previously in California, um, you, the, you could be stopped um, if law enforcement felt like you were loitering with the intent to commit prostitution. And it was a tool. I have lots of friends in law enforcement. I have my best friend is a detective, sex crimes. They Law enforcement use that tool to intervene in the cycle of abuse that is human trafficking. Well, they essentially made that legal in the state, and which is why we've seen this huge explosion, explosion of human trafficking. And it's not women coming from other countries. It's actually domestic girls. So I think there's this false narrative that it's been uh, coming through the southern border. It's happening to our local domestic girls. It's something in our very community. I want to segue completely yeah. away from that for a minute because we only have a short period of time and I want to make sure yeah. we're sharing all the great topics here. One of the things that everybody's being hit with today is mm -hmm. the economy, gas prices, food prices. And I know some of these things are, are, are more national type levels. What do you see that we can need to be doing in the state here to try to figure out yeah. how to solve this issue? So, you know, having served in the state assembly and served in nonprofit capacity for decades, I have a history of delivering for a community. So when I go to the state Senate, I'm not just going there 
and to make promises, I'm going there with a plan. And I have a tax cut plan. You guys can visit my website at suzettevaladares.com to learn more about my tax cut. But there are things that we can do today to put more money in the pockets of hardworking families. Let's say no tax on tips. Mm -hmm. Let's cut the diesel tax so that shipping for business and then us, us as consumers goes down as well, consumer goods. Let's tell our disabled veterans, no residential property tax for you. They have served our country. Mm -hmm. They Good. deserve that. Good. There are a multitude of things that we can do that put money in the pockets of hardworking Californians now. So one of the things that you guys deal with up there and it's, it's your biggest single item, right? Mm -hmm. It's education, isn't it? Yeah. So when you figure that your budget is 40% education, and sometimes I watch, because I'm involved legislatively, if you see mud up there, and trying to figure out to stop the stupid pill sometimes, that, that all they do is cost more money to, to educate kids locally. What do you feel we're on the right track, wrong yeah. track in education? I think it's actually more like nearly 60 in the, in the 50, you know, 55 percent of our budget goes to education. So it's more than even 40 well, percent. I, I was you're, you're talking about. Yeah, that's right. True. Yeah. I was just talking about K through 12. Yeah. Prop well, Prop 98, <laughs> so it's all of our spending, right? Early childhood education spending, um, K through 12 and higher education. I sat on higher yeah. education. Um, we are failing our kids. I mean, look at our test results in California, uh, less than uh 33% of our kids are proficient in grade level math. They can't read. They can't write. I actually think we're dealing with the civil rights issue of our time. Our kids are not getting a quality education. And it's not the money. Yes, schools need resources. You know, we have to protect Prop 98 funding. But we also need to ensure that what we're doing produces outcomes. And it's something that I'm committed to doing when I get to Sacramento. So let's talk on, on something real quick here because we're just almost at the end here. Is... You're needing to deal with a supermajority. We've had a supermajority now for what? It's been eight years now, I think, or somewhere around there. How do you work in that world? I know you were yeah. in there for two years in that world. Now you're coming to the state Senate where there's only 40 of you, which yeah. I'm guessing that probably 10 or less of you probably be in there. How do you feel you work along in that? So I think my time spent in the nonprofit sector really helped me to be effective in Sacramento. In the nonprofit sector, you identify a community issue you bring together community stakeholders and you put together solutions and you execute, right? I took that same approach during my time in the state assembly. I was a founding member of the bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus. Mm. It was four Republicans, four Democrats, one no party preference uh, member of the bicameral, both of the Senate and the assembly. Um, and we worked together to look at bills, to I'm sorry, to produce bills, to produce solutions for California's problems. There is an appetite to put partisan politics aside. I think it's a growing appetite to actually get things done for the state of California and for every California and for our community. I'm looking forward to going back there and serving on that committee again to get things done. So we ran out of time here. Oh, no, I'm oh sorry. Gosh, was, you and I, we could talk for I hours know. on this. Can you tell the folks real quick, why should they vote for you? Yeah. So I would be honored to be your representative in Sacramento. If you're looking somebody who genuinely cares about our community, who has lived, worked, and played here for decades, and you want a voice that is going to deliver for our community and address the issues that we care about most, the high cost of living, the rise in crime, our homelessness crisis, and somebody passionate about education, then I'm asking for your vote. Thank you very much for sharing with us Thank today. You. Thank you very much. We've had a chance to sit down with some great candidates tonight. Um, it's interesting to see how the uh, what the candidates feel that what they need to be and what they're where to try their aspire and what they think the city council or the school board for the water board or whatever agency or the, the trustees at the college, what everybody's thinking here. So um, you know what? If you haven't had a chance, please subscribe. Ring the bell and give us a thumbs up because we want to provide more of these candidate forums, these uh, these interviews to get them out to the public. Because how in the world do you find out who these folks are nowadays? It's very, very difficult. So, you know what? Stay tuned. We got more coming your way, more episodes of no matter if it's candidates or all kinds of stuff for River, Mojave River Valley News. We'll see you next time.
effective sex crimes, they want 